okay so this is one of those old school videos when I'm not using some fancy software that I made and I'm just explaining some code okay um, so some people ask me to explain the code for k-center algorithm and k-means algorithm in python okay not in javascript um, right so let's just get started well this was I mean part of this code was uh, given to us in one of our lectures so uh, first of all let's go for the first part like matplotlib, pyplot, import all, scikit-learn from that we are importing this thing called load digits um, and we are using this load digits to load um, an object called dig so I'm calling it dig which is so it's an object which contains so it, one of its properties is uh, one of its uh, attributes is um, so it's somewhere over there right so uh, data right this attribute so like dig has uh, one attribute called data which is basically um, which is basically a big array of data points so this is like a very big matrix uh, and this matrix contains uh, these arrays right uh, and each array is a 64-bit uh, 64 image so basically an 8 by 8 uh, image and that's basically 64 uh, bits that you have that 64 pixels and not bits sorry so 64 pixel image um, so basically it contains numbers like you know 1.0 2.0 maybe 3.0 and then like maybe over here you got uh, 64 okay, 64 is too big 15 something it just keeps going like that this length is 64 so it's a 64 long uh, array and then these are our elements basically so this data uh, list that you have each element is a 64 long vector 64 dimensional vector and you have 1791 I think uh, such vectors so that's the data set which we are you know which we are feeding to our uh, algorithm okay so what are we doing with it though well we, we are just doing the case center algorithm so first we are defining uh, the function that will do the case center algorithm for us so we put in the data uh, which in this case will just be dig right uh, dig data in fact yeah so that will be our data um, and we also have to put another number k so k is the number of uh, centers that you want so if you watched the last video that I made you would know a bit about um, the k center algorithm basically what you do is uh, you choose the first point at random which is happening over here um, new c equal to data np dot random dot randint uh, 0 to n right so np dot random dot uh, randint 0 to n that basically just creates you know like a random integer like kind of thing right and data uh, square brackets that array that basically gives us um, yeah, that basically gives us, you know, how do I even say this thing? Yeah, basically gives us a data point. That's how that's what I will say. So of all the of all the data points in our um, data matrix matrix data list, uh, it will just give us this index data point, right? So that's our new C, which is short for um, new center. Okay then we are doing c dot append new c so c is a list of the centers or it was supposed to be list i don't think i'm using that yeah I'm, i am in fact using that fine so c is um a list of all these centers so we'll append our first center which is chosen randomly to that list also you have these other things so cost that's an empty uh, uh, array um, empty list sorry uh, right now c was an empty list but now we filled our first uh, center into it n equal to data dot shape 0 um, right so data dot basically data is a and and the array right so that dot shape 0 is just the length of uh, our data so that's like 1791 or whatever number that was okay so that's like number of data points that we have okay so data 2d is basically our data but we have converted that um, in a matrix form so our data as I told you is basically a list of data points and you can think of every data point is basically a matrix so, sorry um, is 
a vector right so yeah every data point is a 64 long vector now what data 2d is is basically uh, you take this list or take this vector and you convert it into a, a matrix so the np dot new axis over there that's for putting uh, this into another array so you are increasing the axis of this n dimension array basically and then the same thing happens with all of these right so that's what data 2d is it's basically data but we have increased the dimension by by one by one well you have increased the dimension by an axis so that makes sense right so for example if your data was you know um 1791 times 64 comma 64 if this was a tuple describing the shape of your data previously now it's 1791 comma uh, 1 comma 64 or something like that right that's what data 2d is so we have converted our data points into 2d or into nested array things right so basically like n dimensional arrays with um, two axes right that's what i will say fine so that's your data 2d awesome how do you use that why did we even define this new thing so um we are uh, first first thing we do is, is actually like run a loop so for i in range k because you will be successively adding uh, more centers into our our c uh, list right so the way we get a center is well first of all we figure out the uh, the distances of every data point to our new center right so given a new center you the first thing we do is of course figure out the distances so like if you have these as our data points and then this thing is your new center you'll just figure out oh this is the distance this is the distance you will put all of these distances in a in an array right and you will call that as an array of you know new distances so n e w t basically okay that's n p dot linear algebra dot norm so norm that gives us the distance okay uh, of data 2d minus new c and p dot new axis uh, comma colon x is equal to negative 1 i'm going to explain what's happening over here first of all let's start with this thing new c and p dot new axis comma colon well what is new c first of all uh, the first new c that you will be using is this thing so it's just one of the data points so um, applying this kind of slicing on that what that basically does is so like this colon is pretty understandable it just takes every element in our uh, new c and the array and then it uses those elements and then makes um, another array so basically it just replicates the new c array in fact and what this does so like np.new axis what that does is that it uh, puts that array into another array so it increases the uh, dimension right so if this was your new C previously, now this has become basically the same thing, except that now it's 2D kind of, right? S sort of like a matrix. Anyway, so that is, um, yeah, your new C and P dot new axis comma colon, right? Okay. So what is data 2D minus new C and P dot new axis comma colon? Well, this is gonna broadcast. So this will actually broadcast it so that you know you put this over here actually i'm gonna color these guys so i'll just say that this thing is red red okay cool and let's also make that red so this will actually go over here so now you have this new c array um stacked up multiple times basically yeah uh, that's what numpy does automatically that it broadcasts it over this bigger array and then it basically creates a new array like that yeah i mean although not in the memory but it kind of operates it like that okay now we have this new array which basically just contains new c new c new c a bunch of times right over here you got the data element so this is like the zeroth elements the first element so on and now what you do is you subtract uh, these matrices so you do this minus that right and so what you eventually end up getting is so like if i were to write this in more mathematical sense let's just say that this thing is v0 vector this thing is v1 vector and so on and new c let's just call that as 
um, C vector. I don't know, just calling it something. So then, what you're doing is you're subtracting these two uh, uh, arrays. Then that basically gives us this thing: v not vector minus c vector, comma v one vector minus c vector, and so on. Right? That's what this whole thing is. And then you are doing np dot linear algebra dot norm of this thing x is equal to negative one. So x is equal to negative one basically looks at the rightmost um, axis and then just takes the uh, just just creates a distance according to the coordinates in that axis. And in this case, the rightmost axis is basically these um, innermost arrays, right? Um, which contain you know the numbers we are actually interested in, right? Um, so basically what will happen is that you will you get something like this and then you know the mod of v naught minus c vector or something like that uh, yeah v1 minus c vector so that's what this complete thing is so that's our uh, new d thing okay so now if i is equal to zero distance this is this thing so distance is another variable that we are creating and distances is supposed to be, um, how do I say this? It's supposed to be a matrix of uh, these numbers. Okay, so I'll explain what's going on, but first of all, just run through the code. So if i equal to zero, that is you're talking about the first center, then this thing is our distances uh, variable. Else, distances is equal to np dot concatenate distance, uh, distances, comma, new d, x is equal to one. What that means is, you already have a distances matrix so maybe it looks something like that and inside you have some number so similarly like this is a number similarly you, have, you got some other number we don't care about what that number is but this is what distances uh, was looking like okay and you know you make that matrix okay and it's not just uh, one number over here actually you got like a bunch of numbers so this is something like column vector of course, a column vector is a concept from MATLAB and all that, but that is not the case in NumPy. Instead, you can think of this as just, you know, an array, basically. So, you got these um, columns, and you have a list of these column vectors. And what you do is, uh, actually, I should move it over here. So, you take it, take it over here, and you concatenate these two uh, matrices. And you do it along x is equal to 1 so x is equal to 0 is uh, this axis so you know go for green so this is x is equal to 0 x is equal to 1 would be this basically so you concatenate these things basically okay so what that gives us is a bigger data so, so a, a bigger distances matrix right so something like that so you got all of the previous numbers in our column vectors of course and you also got this new thing so you know v vector minus c vector v not minus c vector but you get it right the mod of that or the norm of that or whatever then the next column vector will be something like all of the stuff that was previously in data sorry in distances right this thing is distances remember that and the mod of the v1 vector minus c vector minus c vector okay and just keep going like that so that thing is now our distances so once again, what does this actually represent? Every column vector over here basically contains um, the distances of a certain data point. So this is the zeroth data point, this is the first data point, so on. So the distance of the zero data point uh, from every center, right? That's what the entries in this column vector is actually. And you just have a list of these column vectors. So this is like a very powerful, you know, data that we have, right? So so you know we can use this a lot of times and this concatenated function is like really nice because now we just have to evaluate the distances from the new center and then just append it in our list of the distances and you don't have to recalculate all of this basically right because in the javascript example that you saw we were recalculating all of them and that was very inefficient but now you don't have to okay so that's pretty awesome okay cool so we, uh, we did that um, and now we are creating our you know, first meaningful thing so this is the labels list which is um, which is basically containing the labels or, or the clusters which every data element belongs to so what we do is we look at this column vector figure out which entry or which entries index so like 
the index of which entry um, has the has the minimum distance. So like basically arg min of uh, this column vector, right? So say the third entry was the minimum um, number, then this whole column vector will be replaced by three. If this was like having fifth entry as the minimum value then this would be five and so on right so in numpy what we do is we just do np dot argmin distance uh, distance is x equal to, x is equal to one so x is equal to one is uh, this thing right so previously we saw x is equal to zero somewhere again okay, no, uh, that was also x equal to one so x is equal to one is um, you know of course the first axis so the zeroth axis is the outermost one the first axis is the one inside of it over here as well x equal to 1 is basically this thing right and yeah so it just does argmin uh, you know element wise on these elements column vectors are our elements in this case uh, and that's why we have to specify the axis because that tells us what are our elements so that it can do it point wise okay so yeah it just, it just does argmin on uh, that fine and that gives you a a list of our labels and these labels are of course telling us which cluster does our data point belong to so the zeroth data point might belong to the third cluster first data point might belong to the fifth cluster second might belong to the zeroth cluster whatever okay cool so so far so far so good we have uh, finally figured out which data point belongs to which cluster after appending our you know new cluster to our data right Okay, so now our task is generate another uh, center. Okay, so that's okay. The way we have to do that is, um, yeah. So for each cluster, what we'll do is just figure out the centroid, and that will basic. Oh wait, okay, we're not doing means. So yeah, key center. So okay, uh, our task was to get the new cluster. Um, Right, so for each cluster, we'll figure out we'll figure out uh, the pair of points, or or I should say the the point in that cluster which is farthest from the center. So say this was your complete data set, and you know these were your you know points in the zero cluster. Maybe these are your points in the first cluster or whatever. Maybe these are your points in you know, the second cluster. So, so far you have figured out three clusters okay so then uh, and let's say that these were your centers so what you do is just figure out okay which of uh, these red points are the farthest away from our black cluster uh, like from the from this black point which is the center for our red cluster and say that point is this right so then this thing is the radius um, of our or, or the cost of our uh, red cluster right similarly for blue cluster we'll figure out the cost for yellow we'll figure out the, uh, the cost and so on um, right and of course you also have to keep in account like which um, which point actually did that although we can always figure that out later on so in this case we are not actually keeping those in account we'll figure it out later on so right now all we are doing is just figuring out what's the maximum radius basically right so like if this cluster was confined to a disk then what's the radius of that disk or the minimum radius of that disk does that make sense anyway so the way we do that is um, this thing you you declare this plus disks thing um, which is the distances from so like from the center of the cluster so for each cluster you are getting a new plus disks thing and what it's basically doing is it's taking this distances um, matrix right so this big matrix that you had which contained uh, the distances like every column vector was containing the distances of the you know ith index data element to the centers right and you are only taking those column vectors which have the labels as um, j so j is representing a certain cluster so for j in range um, i plus 1 why i plus 1 because you have already inserted the ith cluster so over here this is going uh, in so like i is going in range uh, k right so you have already appended the ith cluster in your data so like in your distances uh, matrix basically 
um, and so we just want labels equal to uh, j where j is ranging in i plus 1 right so the last will be i okay um, right so what is clusters again clusters is just a slice of this whole data matrix uh, which contains the which contains the column vectors which are in a in a certain cluster the cluster j in fact now r mu is np dot a max plus this um, and then you got col colon comma j over here so colon comma j what that means is you take any column vector you are finding the jth entry because of course that is the entry that is giving the distance of the element to the to the center of the jth cluster right so the center of the jth clusters distance to the element that's what we are focusing on we don't care about anything else so what we're doing is we're uh, figuring, out, figuring out the maximum of that and that's your r mu so if r mu is bigger than r r equals basically yeah this whole loop just figures out the maximum um, such radius right and of course you're also doing this thing ci equal to j so ci is the is the cluster index so um i don't say this uh, yeah so yeah the cluster index right that's what i'll say basically like in our clusters list you know the c list i think that was yeah so in our clusters list um right which cluster has the biggest radius that's what ci will be at the end of this for loop and now you are defining this plus thing which is labels equal to equal to ci so this is basically a list of true and false a list of booleans i'm gonna resize everything so plus is something like this it's like true false true false true false so on right so this basically tells us whether or not the you know the ith index data element um, yeah does that have so i'm gonna say yeah does that have label equal to ci which means that is that um is that from the cluster which has the biggest radius that's what it will read as okay now we're redefining clusters so we already use clusters uh, variable over here but now we're re redefining it as distances plus colon comma ci so once again we are slicing our distances matrix and we are only taking those column vectors which uh, have labels equal to equal to ci so they must have the label being it's like they must be belonging from the cluster which has the biggest radius basically so our ci is the cluster and then from that column vector we are only taking the ci at the entry right so that's plus disks okay and then we are doing plus data equal to data sliced by plus so we are taking um, so like data is of course made of these column vectors right this is basically what your data looks like data matrix so we are taking slice of that and oh no wait this is used to the distances matrix right our data is a bit different right our data is like is like this yeah okay so from this data you are taking a slice of all the all the data points which have label equal to ci so all the data points which belong to the ci cluster you take those so once again our data points are these 64 uh, long arrays right so that's your class data okay now new cdi which is um oh yeah this was new cluster data index so i know these names are weird but like come on i was only doing this for myself so this is the, this will be the index of the new cent okay new center data, uh, data index so this will be the index of the new center when you will be running the next uh, next iteration in this loop you will re you will need the new center right so this will be the index of the new center right and we are finding this to basically figure out the new center and that will be np.argmax plus disks so once again um, what is plus this plus this is just distances plus ci so it's, it's a slice of the distances but we are only taking uh, the ci entry from the column vectors and of course the slice only contains those column vectors which have label equal to ci right so yeah the only thing we are caring for and now new cdi is the argmax of that which basically says uh, this gives us the index in data right 
um, oh not in data okay in in the plus disks array it gives us the index of um, of the point which has the biggest distance uh, biggest distance from the center of the CI cluster I know it's a lot but just digest the information right pause a few times if you need to and then we are doing new c equal to plus data new c yeah. so this is a, a part where I messed up really big and like I had to debug it for a whole day so I was I was just doing data new uh, CDI that is wrong you have to do plus data new CDI because this index is not related to the data matrix instead it's related to the to the plus data matrix okay so you're doing plus data new CDI that basically is your new center right yeah because plus data contains the data you know the data elements in a certain cluster CI and new CDI is the index in our class data which has the biggest distance from the center of the cluster so new c equal to plus data new cdi that is you know the next center that we are looking for and you also do this cost of append r so cost is just another uh, list that i've created to keep account of what's the cost at each iteration of our um, clustering and then c dot append new c so appending to C which contains the centers and then once uh, all of these iterations are done so this for I in range case completed we just return uh, your C labels and cost variables right and all of this is unnecessary for now although you do have to do it in the question that's what they asked us to do but yeah all of this is basically unnecessary basically this is the line you should be caring for C labels cost I'm just gonna actually you know, tell you which time you should be getting for. So this thing, C labels cost is equal to K center uh, DIG data 10. So K center is the function that we just uh, defined, and now we are calling it with the argument. So data being this thing, DIG data, and K equal to 10, right? So this will return us C labels and cost, and we are unpacking those into these three variables. Cool. Uh, they, all of this is like unnecessary you don't have to look at any of that fine so the basic thing is you you figured out uh, what this C thing is right so C contains a list of uh, all of the centers like their values basically so you can just use that C thing to you know plot these centers or you know show them as images which I'm doing here right so for I in range 10 subplot to uh, 5 I plus 1 yeah it's comma over there 2 comma 5 comma i plus 1 not necessarily but you can just you know make a new figure or whatever so i am equal to nb dot split ci 8 so remember our data is a 64 long array we have to convert that to into an 8 by 8 matrix in order to use uh, m show on that and then use m show to you know show the image and i'm using the gray reverse uh, c map to sh show like how person who like drew this would have drawn it how it would have looked uh, yeah and just plotting it so this is the final output and as you can see this is really bad uh, I mean this does not look anything like normal numbers that you would expect but the important thing is notice that all of these pictures are very distinct right and that's basically what case center does it does not necessarily give you the you know the best clustering but it does give you very distinct looking pictures because that's the that's the thing we're doing we're just you know reducing the biggest radius that you could get so so then it, it's gonna give you you know the farthest point as the new cluster so it will give you very unique looking um very unique looking uh, data elements right and of course the cost decreases and that's what we want situation of cost with number of centers is decreases uh, but still pretty amusing right that this did not like this didn't do something stupid like considering two very similar looking things as different other kind of date over here you have this thing and this thing I know it's supposed to be a 9 and that's 7 and it's very different but still it kind of did and okay this 9 and this 9 are also very different so maybe that's why I got confused between these two and thought oh these are different and similarly over here it kind of did some weird whatever but yeah these do look very unique right I mean different from each other that's what I want 
um, so the final cost after you know doing the 10 iterations that is 49.829 whatever this thing is approximately 50 so that basically means that the biggest distance was 50 right and yeah this was a trace implementation that I used in the last video not exactly though I didn't use this function I just actually wrote whatever in, is in this function on the next slide so that I can run that manually but whatever so yeah um, that's it and I'll see you guys in the next video bye Oh, and I'll essentially probably do the K-means algorithm, so that's also pending. Bye.